welcome to Pagan Coffee Talk. If you enjoy our content, please consider donating and following our socials. Now, here are your hosts, Lady Alba and Lord Knight. All right. So it's an election year, as we all know. Yes. Um, for as, I would say, you know, for as long as social media has been around, I have seen scores of witches and people in the pagan community talking about using their abilities, their time, their spiritual efforts, either alone or with others to (laughs) curse candidates, to sway election results, to basically start bringing politics into their magic. Stop it. Please. Stop. I beg of you. That is not activism in witchcraft. No. Activism is prompting other pagans to vote and voting for the candidate who supports your beliefs your bel- and whatever it is you're looking for. Because the closest you're ever going to get out of me is quit voting for the person you hate the least. Yeah. Vote for the person you like the most. Yeah. But this idea of magic... And politics is, what the fuck? Why? Okay, what makes people think they have the right to override what other people want to do? Yeah. Because at the at the core of this, this is what in the world they're talking about. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is manipulation magic. People right. are trying to manipulate people's wheels. Yeah, right. I'm going to, you, you just said it, exactly. I'm going to override this is my the problem. majority vote to sway something. Because I don't think I'm going to get the outcome. I won't. Yeah. Trump, clearly, obviously, right? He's been a huge topic and target for many pagans for their magic over the last eight years. Mm -hmm. Um, I just... And all I'm going to say is he's still there and can y'all stop now? I find it, you know, oddly fascinating the way people think that... They're going to throw something up on Facebook and rally a bunch of other pagans to get together over like a Zoom meeting on a designated moon and try to take him down. That's a lot of effort and a lot of energy going up against a tidal wave of millions of other people. Again, you cannot fight the tidal wave. Right. We're talking about the same thing that happened with the people on Witch Talk Mm -hmm. who wanted to curse the moon. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Anything that you're doing that's that large a scale. (laughs) (laughs) Me personally, I automatically expect it to backfire. I don't even expect it to get out the front door. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) But I find it interesting, again, this politics is becoming a part of people's religious pride. Why? This baffles me in the same way it baffles me when I see Christians have a picture of the president on their shrine at home. You know be, what I be, mean? Be cal- because again, lifestyles have become so politicized. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. So Christians come out and they're going, hey, you know what? To be a virtuous Christian and stuff, this is the lifestyle. Oh, ah, no. Yeah. It's weird. You know, it's okay for them to say that. It's okay for you not to listen to them. Yes. But the idea that we have to, to me, it's also in line with the whole, the the eco discussion, right? Yeah. That we have to cast spells to save the earth. Oh, boy. She's fine. You know, I'm so important. Yeah. When she's had enough of us, trust me, she'll deal with it. (laughs) She doesn't care. She's going to boot us in the ass, no problem. God forbid if she tells her big brother, the universe, to do something to us. That's my point. <laughs> I mean, do, am I saying we have to contribute and be complacent? No. No. But why do we have to start publicly... Shaming? Yeah, and making politics part of a group or solitary practice. That's a slippery, slippery we're, slope. We're, we're also basing this on... Whether we like someone or not, if we're going to be friends with someone. Yeah. To amaze everyone, mine and your politics are probably so far apart. 
What, We've never discussed it, and mm, I never will. I don't want to. I don't care. <laughs> but here's what's funny. I can honestly say in all my years, pagan gathers, uh, meetings with elders, classes, group discussions, I can't think of a p- single political discussion. Ever. Nope. Ever. That especially that revolved around a candidate. Now, maybe I, an issue, maybe I, a bill... I remember us sitting at a full moon meeting. Mm. Someone brought that up and both of us shot shot him down real fast when he mm, went to go say yeah, something. We were like, no, yeah, no, yeah, you don't. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. We don't discuss that here. But but typically, like I said, maybe a bill. That right. I could see. But candidates? No, no, no shut up. I don't want to unleash. First of all, why would I even want that in ritual space? Truly. Ew. 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 So gross. I don't want that anywhere near my spiritual practices. I mean, like, I could feel that sticking to my robe. Well, and then to take into account that sometimes spells do things in funky ways. Mm Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying. But part of it is such a sign of the times, right? Again, everybody has to be involved. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody thinks their opinion is right. Everybody's so heated and so fired up. But, but again, I will say, find me an Eastern practitioner, find me a Buddhist who gives a damn about a political candidate. They don't. Nope. Yeah. It is so far off their radar. And we kind of should be operating in a similar fashion. Again, it's not to say that in your personal life, you can't do whatever you want. Attend rallies, you know, participate. Yeah. And do it. Volunteer. Go, yes. go, go help the candidate out you best believe in. But it has no place in, in church. Cr- no. No. And, as, and I'm going to sit here and say this as long as I'm the head of this tradition, this tradition will never endorse a candidate of any. Exactly. You, I'm sorry, we could literally have a gay witch on the ballot, and I'm pretty sure that we would be sitting there going, damn it, we can't talk about it. We can't. Mm, All right, we're just going to sit here. We're just just going to sit here. We're just going to nod our heads, but we know. We're we're, we're poking each other right here going, look, look, look. look, But we're still, yeah, (laughs) we're still not going to, like, have his campaign stickers at the door for everybody to take. No. That is complete bullshit. That is not what we're here for, and that is not our place. And I'm not going to pull my hair out because someone pulls up and they have some political sticker on the back of their... No. And they come in a ritual. It's their right. That's it's their fine. right. It's fine. Don't care. Don't but care. But leave it at the door like because everything I, else. I put, it to, I put it the same way I believe in religion, but I... Mm-hmm. It's not your religion. It's not your... Yeah. It's not your politics. And no, nobody agrees with anyone 100%. No, but I also think it, there's something again about the times we're in. It's the audacity to think that our gods give a shit about any of this. They've been here. They've been there. They've done that. They've seen it. They've seen the, these people come and go sure that in some ways they're going who are these false idols and these weirdos that are getting practically deified absolutely but why would they interfere why why would they care it's a blip in time for them i mean it's just Mm -hmm. at these scales that we are talking about these yeah again the relationship with your toenail yeah and it really, to me, is it's remarkable how people think that the gods would give a damn. Well, did we mess up when we went around and we told a generation, you're special? <laughs> Here's an award. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly and truly. I don't know. You're unique and special just the way you are. Yeah. It's not even just that. It's, it's again, it's the power. It's the influence. It's the, the fact that individuals now can see in real time a sort of like a trickle-down effect of what they say or what they do as it relates to socials and how it affects or influences other people in a way that we couldn't years ago. No. And that fuels some of it. But it's worthwhile to stop 
and take a tiny pause and go, does this really have a bearing on my spiritual life? Now, does this help out yeah. in the long run? And who? Who does it help and why? You know, I mean, there's, <laughs> I hate to say it, right? Behind Trump, there's another Trump. Mm -hmm. Behind Biden, there's, there's another, another Biden. Biden. There's always, every politician, yeah. So let them do what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. That is not a spiritual affair. That is an, that's the affairs of men. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think, um, A, I mean, I do know it's time for coffee. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you have cracked so, into witch talk. Oh, Lord Knight. Oh, oh my, my God. Can All I convert right. now? <laughs> have, I, have I cracked it? No, by no means, because I really do feel like witch talk is the never-ending rabbit hole of um, Hades. <laughs> but I have so many thoughts and so many things I want to talk about. And, and who knows? This might end up being a multi-part kind of episode thing because there's so much going on. All right. So first of all, uh, I think we need to address the fact that witch talk, it's a force. It's a thing. It's, it's happening. It, it, it's, you can't stop it. It has a life of its own. No. But what I'm seeing is a lot of manipulative, money hungry BS. Uh-huh. So it's well documented and well understood that TikTok is made up of an audience that averages like an age of like 14. Yeah. It's kids. But the uh, social media witches, I'm going to use that term super loosely, <laughs> that are out there that are promoting, um, what I'm seeing is a clear toxic advantage taking manipulative oh yeah that that's just preying on people's anxieties fears doubt yes and all of this shit about you know offering tarot readings and being spiritual advisors and 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 you need to take my master class or my ultimate class. it's, it's worse just, than that it's people literally just going i have your tarot reading the the gods my guides my angels like whatever you know they're using it has spoken to me and i have a message directly for you but if you want it you have to message me and then of course once you message this person they tell you that you got to pay them you know right it could be 10 bucks it could be 500 dollars but either way it's uh it's a scheme. They, 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 see people in I think people fall into this trap because they think the algorithm is so random. It's not, though. But it's not. No, it's not. It's extremely targeted. It knows who you are, and it is picking you. It is selecting you, and these people are... It's so sad, right? They're preying on others. Now, look, we've seen this throughout crafts... <laughs> <laughs> as long as I can remember. Yes, we seek out spiritual counsel. Yes, we seek out those with different gifts, psychics, mediums, tarot readers, intuitive individuals, right? all of that. But they are tools. They're not the end-all be-all. No. And... Well, again, again, let's talk about the mindset of that person who has to seem to have to have that tarot reading every day. But that's it. There's something else going on there. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about this an awful lot in craft where if you don't find it within, you won't find it without. Yes, I'm quoting Doreen Valiente. I know. But I mean, it's, it's true. It is. It's a it's a primary principle for us. And so when you're dependent on others. You're just dependent. Yeah. And it gets. And, and please understand, this isn't religion. That's not faith. That's not... Uh, that's not anything. No. I mean, again, everybody seems to think that you have to be connected to the occult or whatever just to use magic. Mm -mm. All right? All you have to do is just... Everyone be, has magic. It's, Everyone. And 
it's so so ridiculous. Well, see, I've argued, I've on. argued for a long time. Mm-hmm. People did not come to people like us for our connection to magic. They no. came to us for our wisdom and our knowledge. Yeah, they came for very specific reasons. But typically, again, how witches would get paid or compensated was very different. But this new culture, right? It's all about economics, and it's all about gaining more money for these followings. I mean, I know you and I have referenced it before, but I can't help sitting and watching this and going, it's just like Dionne Warwick's psychic line in the 80s. Exactly. And call me now for your free reading, (laughs) Miss Cleo. Yeah. Yeah. Who was, if you remember, right, Miss Cleo was was the shit back in the 90s, but the reality is she was completely debunked. Even the accent was fake. (laughs) <laughs> you know, she wasn't even, you know, j- uh, of any kind of island, Haitian, Jamaican, none of that. She, it was it was all bunk. And it's the same idea. They're creating that same concept. Now, the difference is even back then, people honestly believed that when you called a psychic line, you were going to speak directly to that person. You never did. No. Never. You spoke to call center individuals who were trained with scripts and in what to say and for different scenarios. And it was all pre-rehearsed. And now we're seeing the same thing. But the difference is because of the nature of social, social media, these people on TikTok or on these different platforms can actually record you a direct message and take a video for you or so people think, oh, my God, I've got, you know, this is incredible. Like, I'm no. special. No, we, we have the whole ghost phenomenon. I have, I have Whoopi Goldberg reaching out yeah. to me to tell me a message from the other side. Right. But how many other people got that same message? And even if it was recorded specifically for you or if it is very personalized, it still doesn't mean that that person is not simply out to fill their pocketbook. It's extremely toxic. And while on one hand, I'm like, you know, there's witch talk has potential. Yes. To be a resource and to be a place where people. But when you sit here and see article (sighs) after article after article of we're going to curse the moon. Yeah. We're going to well, curse the fate. I, I mean, come on. Come the big on. thing right now is the election, right? We're going to we're going to curse Trump. We got to raise money to keep him out of office and to do all of these things and I'm like, where's his money going? Yeah. Who's who's pocketing this? That's what? I mean, Anybody uh, could do that. You know, I mean, do, do you really need that much money to cast a spell? That's my point though. I could go up to the grocery store and put a, a box out that says I'm going to do the same thing and see how much, you know, donation money I can collect in a day. The only difference is I'm going to encounter all types, the people who are pro the argument and against the argument, but on something like witch talk, but, again, it's no, 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 so no, no, targeted. No, 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 no. What, what kills me is nobody has ever sat there and stopped and go, okay, What's the logic of this spell? If this is all true and all this and we're really going to cast this spell, what are you going to do? But here's the thing. How how are you going to fight? Are you with me? I just... I do, but here's what I want to know. How is this any different than going to a church of any denomination and writing down what you need and putting it in the prayer box for... Someone again, right? Again, to pray for you to maybe not petition deity, but you know what I mean. Right. I mean, it's the same thing on the TV the, 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 evangelists. Yeah, yeah, but they they brought out. I think it was the same stack of notes every time. Mm, yeah, but there are so many places that will spiritually intervene on your behalf. Mm. What makes these witch talkers more effective or more powerful than anybody else. Nothing. There's no logic to that other than, again, they're preying on, I don't want to say the weak because everybody can have a moment of weakness. Well, I, I, I know people, you might start out with, hey, I'm going to do a free read. I'm yeah. going to do a couple of free yeah. readings. Yeah. I'm Bait gonna, and switch. And then all of a sudden, well, you know, 
Yeah, draw them in. You know, mm-hmm. I, I got other clients and I'm doing you for free, so Ugh. you're going to have to sort of pay. And now they seem more legit because now you're... It's very, very disturbing to me that this is happening. And on the surface, Witch Talk has, again, this ability to be something wonderful. But instead, it's creating these garbage scenarios where now the social media sites are having to crack down on these things Mm -hmm. and literally systematically shut down the accounts that are doing this because it's garbage. I mean, again, it's like... When you're dealing with witch talk, you're dealing with mainly teenagers. Yeah. Easy to... Oh, my God. Absolutely. And I mean, all their, you know, the love spells and the and some of the things that I'm seeing, I mean, they're really disturbing. Like a vague statement where somebody will go, I foresee your love interest really having you on their mind in the coming weeks, prompting someone to potentially reach out to, stalk, bother, right? Right. Another person on social media who may or may not even know of your existence, and especially with kids, right? When you get, you know, school dynamics and all of that. I'm sure you have a few people out there that are doing, no, 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 she's, she's actually talking straight to me. This has got to be causing some really bizarre strains out there where kids are taking actions and really believing, thinking that... The, it's because the spirits said it was okay. Well, I mean, you've got these <sighs> people that sat there and they, they've seen the stuff. They've done their love spell. And then the very next day, this just happens to pop up into their face. Right. right. And that's what I mean. It's very predatory. And again, the algorithm is much smarter than you give it credit for. It knows. It knows exactly what it's doing. And... You know, I don't even think it's our listeners necessarily that are susceptible to this. Maybe some of them are, and this is a cautionary tale, but I think it's more about getting the word out there that this is not a standard practice or the way this works in the community. No, it, no I think you're right. I think most of our listeners just heard that went. Oh, shit. <laughs> right. I would hope so. I would hope so. Yeah. But it's but it's also about, like I said, spreading the word yeah. and banning together in a sense to be anti witch talk or to be against some of these practices. Some of these people do a long con. Oh yeah. Oh absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Oh. And and I I'm sorry, those are those are a whole lot more devious and the whole nine of yards. Of course it is. And then you're almost, some of them, you're verging on cult tactics. It's it's scary. And these are kids that are that are gravitating to this, being sucked in by this. And for how long and how much? And then they want, again, we wonder why in the community we have a bad name. This has been going on for decades, though, right? This is the same thing with the charlatan tarot readers that existed in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Wait, well before the internet was, well, and yeah. Now you have a whole entire culture. Mm-hmm. Every day there's another thing about, oh, they're influencing this or yes. they're doing, or back and forth. Yeah. Do you know, by the way, that in many, many states it is still illegal to fortune tell? Yeah. It is, um, in many places, it is illegal to fortune tell, to... Um, Practice magic in a in a in the, more the magician sense, sleight of hand, that sort of thing. Right. Because it it is it's considered a con or a hustle in in many instances, and most of those laws exist because people are taken advantage of, not for any other reason. I'm fairly certain that when you see like the psychic fairs and some of the events where you know there's mm-hmm. somebody there and it's free, there's no issue. Oh, I'm. Or you don't again on some of them fairs. If you're paying one price and yes. going in, and it's just a bunch of local Everybody's people doing like, it, it's fine. This is fine. I that ain't this big of a deal. But this is but just. But this, whew, it's it's. Scary. I would trust the psychic fairs first. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> to be quite honest with you, <laughs> I feel like anyone. Here's the way I look at it, and and I think this is really how we sum up this episode. A psychic that targets you is not a psychic you want. <laughs> right? You should have to seek out 
<laughs> no, I just got this image of this is creepy person just hanging over your shoulder. Like, but that's it. But that's kind of what they do. <laughs> that's sort of how social media makes it possible, right? But the way most of us traditionally have a relationship, again, with a seer, a card reader, a psychic, a medium, right? Any of these arts, we sought them out. And, and on, on average, most of the people I know that are in craft and stuff like that, most of them don't get fortunes read. No, no. But on the that, off they'll, again, chance, they'll do it as a if they're going to a psychic fair and they're doing a donation yeah. to a temple. They'll do that, but but on the off chance that we do, and some of us do throughout the community, and that's mm-hmm. fine. But typically, mm-hmm. it's word of mouth. It's reference. Uh-huh. You are, and and you contact these people, and they have a wait list that's months and months and months long. That's what you want. Yes, that's someone who potentially has a gift that is actually valuable. A psychic that is constantly popping up in your feed or wanting to no, oh. that is so backwards. People with gifts like that tend to still stay. Most of the ethical kind of psychics, hidden. I think, would not actually be out there no. divulging personal mm-hmm. information about people. They also are not, they are more specific than that. And there's no possible way that they could reach through the ether of the internet. Just to. Yes. Not happening. No. Not happening. Some of these psychics that have the huge waiting lists, part of that process is the very fact that they say, I need you to send me something. Yeah. I don't care if it's a napkin that you used at the, you know dinner last night, but I need you to send me something so that I can form a spiritual bond. I mean, I know magic seems weird and stuff like that, but for me to sit here and say, but some senses only go so far. Yeah, I know. You know? I know. This, this to me, like I said, is kind of part one of this, oh, this <laughs> you know, series of sort of, sort of go- going, what the hell is going on out there? <laughs> what is happening? And largely, what is social media fueling in which community? They're, oh, God. I know. I know. We're going to explore more of it. All right. Um, let me go get some more coffee. All right. You do that. Thanks for listening. Join us next week for another episode. Peg and Coffee Talk is brought to you by Life Temple and Seminary. Please visit us at lifetempleseminary.org for more information, as well as links to our social media. Facebook, Discord, Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit. We travel down this trodden path, a maze of stone and mire. Just hold my hand as we pass by a sea of blazing pyres. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks.